Hi, it's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. Blue Origin, perhaps the sleeping giant of the aerospace industry, will be going from a tiny little suborbital rocket to one of the biggest rockets ever made. Now you guys have been asking and asking me to do a video all about Blue Origin and their massively ambitious new Glenn rocket, but I've withheld. Why? Well, to date we really didn't have that much information. Just some pretty animations, a few videos of them firing their BE-4 engine, and a few basic specs of the vehicle. Blue Origin has been awfully quiet about this monster rocket. Until now. Finally, Blue Origin blessed us, or really their future customers, with a payload user's guide. Ugh, that sounds like the lamest announcement ever. But in all reality, it's super, super exciting as we finally get those nitty gritty details that I've been waiting for. So today, we actually get to do a quick rundown on Blue Origin. We're gonna talk about their upcoming new Glenn rocket, and then we're gonna compare it to some other heavy lift launchers that it's going to be competing against. Finally, I've been waiting a long time for this one. Let's get started. Three, two, one. All engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. Okay, since I haven't really done any videos on Blue Origin yet, let's do a super quick rundown on who they are. Blue Origin was founded in the year 2000 by the richest human alive, Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon. That's right, they were actually founded two years before SpaceX. So wait, they've been around for almost two decades and have no shortage of money. What the heck have they been up to? That's actually a fair question. Blue Origin is extremely tight-lipped and we often don't hear about what they're working on until one day they're like, oh hey, we did this. And with their company motto being gradium ferociter, Latin for step-by-step -step ferociously, they're conservative on their timelines, slow to show off their details, but just as ambitious as the rest of them. So with that in mind, Blue Origin started chasing the suborbital tourism game first, and they still are to this day. In 2005, Jeff Bezos discussed plans for a vertical takeoff and landing suborbital spaceship called New Shepard. Their first test began all the way back in 2006 with the launch of their subscale demonstrator called Goddard. Named after the pioneer of the liquid-fueled rocket engine, Robert Goddard, this little guy was the company's testbed to learn how to propulsively land, a key technology they'd be utilizing in their upcoming New Shepard program. Think of this like SpaceX's Grasshopper program, which served a similar purpose for SpaceX. The only publicly released flight reached 86 meters and lasted 25 seconds. The vehicle flew at least three times in total, with the last known flight in 2007. In 2011, Blue Origin began testing a version of their booster for the New Shepard, climbing to over 13 kilometers in altitude and reaching Mach 1.2 in the process. In 2012, the company did a paddleboard test of their crew capsule. By 2015, they began testing their first full New Shepard system, which is an 18 meter tall booster and capsule designed to kiss the edge of space with up to six passengers on board for a 20 minute flight. It's a single stage liquid fueled booster powered by their BE-3 engine running on liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Their plan was to separate the booster and the passenger capsule after main engine cutoff and have the capsule safely land via parachutes nice, simple, and proven, while the booster was going to attempt a rocketry first, land propulsively after touching the edge of space. Their first flight on April 29th, 2015 was a partial success, with the capsule and booster just about kissing the Kármán line or the boundary of space before returning to Earth. Now, the important thing is the capsule was safely recovered via parachutes. However, their first attempt at landing a booster was not successful, citing a failure of hydraulic pressure in the control system leading to a complete loss of the vehicle. It only took seven months for Blue Origin to return to their Texas launch site with a new New Shepard rocket, ready to continue testing their suborbital workhorse. Their launch on November 23rd, 2015 was picture perfect. After successfully reaching 100.5 kilometers in altitude, the booster and capsule came rushing back down to Earth. The capsule popped its parachutes and was recovered exactly as planned. However, the booster continued falling back to Earth, just falling and falling and falling, gaining velocity with each passing moment, the ground coming closer and closer and closer, till suddenly its engine ignited exactly as planned and it performed the world's first propulsive landing after reaching the edge of space. Sorry for the drama, I just wanted to spice it up a little bit. So yeah, they absolutely nailed their second flight. And not only that, they actually reused that exact same booster again, taking it up to space and landing it precisely. And then they did that same thing again three more times for a total of five times. 
with the last flight even doing something more impressive. It performed an in-flight launch abort, which is where they literally lit a solid rocket booster on top of the main booster, and it still survived. Now that is absolutely mind-blowing. They've since retired that second booster, which is now sitting at their factory, and they're on to their third new Shepard. It's flown three times to date, with the last one also being an abort test, but at Apogee. This validated their abort system throughout every portion of flight, providing extra confidence that their passengers are safe no matter the circumstances. So the new Shepard is crazy, crazy impressive setting many spaceflight first and getting really close to finally launching people. And I know it's just a suborbital rocket, and although the total energy and velocities involved in these little hops is nothing compared to orbital flight, it's still an absolutely incredible rocket. Okay, so now I hear you. You're sitting there going, wait, I thought the video title was Will Blue Origin Be the King of Heavy Lift Rockets? How is this anywhere comparable to, say, Falcon Heavy? Well, seeing as New Shepard isn't even that much taller than one of Falcon Heavy's landing legs. Yeah, you're right. But now, let's check out Blue Origin's next rocket. Whoa. Wait, wait, wait. They're going from this to this? From a Cessna to a 747? From a canoe to a cruise ship? From an ant to an elephant? This can't be right, can it? Well, it is, and it's called New Glenn. Are you seeing a pattern yet? from Goddard, a guy who tested rockets, to New Shepard, as in Alan Shepard, the first American to fly in space on a suborbital flight, and now New Glenn, as in John Glenn, the first American to orbit the Earth. But come on, anyone can draw pictures of a giant rocket and say it's going to be super, super big and have really powerful lasers and stuff. So how seriously can we actually take this? Uh, does this answer your question? Whoa. Design work began in 2012 to develop a partially reusable heavy lift rocket, and in 2015, Blue Origin made their plans public. But they dropped another fun hint, claiming this rocket would be the smallest of their orbital rockets. Not only that, its maiden voyage is scheduled for 2021, and Blue Origin is historically fairly accurate with their dates, so this might actually hold. New Glenn will initially launch from LC-36 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida, this pad has hosted over 140 launches, formally launching the Atlas II and Atlas III. Their factory at Kennedy Space Center's Exploration Park is located very close to their launch pad, only about 15 kilometers away. Blue Origin is also working on securing a launch pad at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. I'll be curious if they'll have to build another factory, kinda doubt it, or if they're just going to ship it through the Panama Canal like many other rockets. New Glenn's gonna be powered by seven of the company's BE-4 engines. The BE-4 is racing to become the first operational orbital class rocket engine to run on methane. The other is SpaceX's Raptor engine. They're both crazy impressive engines, but they take on the task in pretty different ways. The Raptor engine is a full flow closed cycle methane engine that's approximately the same size as SpaceX's Merlin engines, while the BE-4 is a closed cycle engine that's closer in size to the RS-25 space shuttle main engine, which means it's very, very big. The BE-4 is very far along in its development. They've successfully hot-fired full-scale versions of the engine many, many times, including some tests lasting over 200 seconds. The performance of the engine has been so attractive, it was chosen by ULA to be the engine they will use on their upcoming Vulcan rocket. The upper stage of the New Glenn will feature two vacuum-optimized versions of their BE-3 engine, that same engine that powers their new Shepard launcher, only these will be called BE-3Us. Combined, they produce just over a mega newton of thrust. We can kind of speculate similar efficiency to the RL-10 vacuum engine, perhaps the United States' most prolific upper stage engine. Like the RL-10, the BE-3U will be an expander cycle engine, but interestingly, it'll be an open expander bleed cycle and not a closed cycle expander. The only other currently operating open bleed expander cycle, at least that I know of, is being used by Japan on the LE-5 series engine. Blue Origin is also planning on using autogenous pressurization on both stages. This means they won't use an inert gas like helium or nitrogen to maintain pressure in the fuel and oxidizer tanks, which can be cool because it can decrease complexity. SpaceX is also planning on using the same system on their upcoming Starship and Super Heavy, previously known as BFR. The rocket's fuselage is made out of aluminum, like most other rockets. There were rumors of Blue Origin making a carbon composite upper stage, but at least for the initial version, 
it's going to be aluminum. There will be a common bulkhead on the upper stage, a technique first seen on the Saturn V. Okay, all this is pretty impressive, but we haven't got to the coolest part of New Glenn. Blue Origin will be recovering and reusing the first stage. Blue Origin is actually quoting up to 25 reuses out of these massive boosters. And seeing how well they've done with New Shepard, I really hope that's a metric they can hit. That's super impressive and will certainly help bring the cost down. They'll be doing a similar technique to what SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavies do most of the time by propulsively landing downrange on a large ship in the ocean. Now before you accuse them of ripping off SpaceX, two notes. First off, if they did, would it matter? Why wouldn't you replicate an awesome system that works so well? But second off, just to throw a little salt at some haters, Blue Origin actually filed a patent for reusable rocket booster landing on a seagoing platform in 2010. Crazy. After a bit of a dispute between SpaceX and Blue Origin, the US Patent Trial and Appeal Board canceled Blue Origin's patent claim, meaning the case was lost and SpaceX was given the go ahead to continue pursuing landing on a ship. But like I said, I don't really care who did it first or whose idea it was first, it's clearly a great idea, and it's what helps allow a significant payload to be lofted into orbit while having enough propellant margin to propulsively land. Unlike SpaceX's autonomous spaceport drone ship, Blue Origin's ship is actually a full-blown Stena freighter container ship called the LPV, or Landing Platform Vehicle. Another notable difference is the LPV will actually be moving while the rocket lands on it. This helps keep the landing platform stable, allowing recovery during rough seas. And I know, you're probably sitting there going, that sounds impossible. How could they land on a moving ship? Isn't that super, super hard? Well, I actually don't think it's gonna be that much different. The rocket can kind of know the trajectory, and I'm assuming they've figured this all out and know how to work it out. So I think they'll be fine, but I'm excited to see them do it. The actual physical landing area is almost the same size as SpaceX's at around 4,500 square meters. Only theirs is a little skinnier and longer and SpaceX is a little closer to a square. And although the propulsive landing might actually look similar to the Falcon 9, the hardware Blue Origin uses before that couldn't be more different. Instead of grid fins at the top end of the booster, the New Glenn will use some small fins, similar to the New Shepard. And although I don't think these fins are going to retract into the booster, they are used for the same purpose, which is to steer through the atmosphere. The New Glenn also has what could be described as some small wings, or strakes, on the lower portion of the booster. These increase the surface area, helping allow the fuselage to generate more lift, which can give the booster a little more cross-range capability, and also gives the atmosphere more time to bleed off more energy. Just like if you were skydiving, your terminal velocity would be a lot slower if you're belly first compared to feet first. We can also see SpaceX perform a little bit of this with their Falcon 9s, but with some additional surface area, New Glenn might almost be able to fly and slow down a substantial amount. Another fun thing to note is how far downrange these boosters will likely land. One of the fun little details to come out of this New Glenn payload user's guide is how long the first stage will actually burn for. The first stage will burn a whopping 199 seconds, or 3 minutes and 19 seconds. Compare that to SpaceX, whose longest burn times are often not much over 2 minutes and 40 seconds. An additional 30 seconds or more of a vehicle traveling at well over 2,000 meters per second. Yeah, that's going to put their recoveries pretty far downrange. Now, again, we don't know the exact flight profile or MECO velocity, but judging by the fact that SpaceX's furthest drone ship landing is around 680 kilometers downrange, New Glenn will probably land significantly further. Blue Origin's website does state the New Glenn will land nearly a thousand kilometers downrange, but I might venture to guess it'll go beyond that even. What do you think? Place your bets now by voting here. Okay, so now that we're finally done giving you a rundown and we're getting pretty heavily into the comparison mode, it's time we actually stack up how the New Glenn will perform against the other launchers in this class that are gonna be flying around the same time. Some notes here before we get started. If we include all the heavy lift launches from around the world, our chart and our screen is gonna get pretty cluttery. So we're just gonna compare the five United States heavy lift launchers that will hopefully be near operating when New Glenn goes online. All five of these rockets either are already flying payloads for the US Air Force, or they've won contracts by the Air Force. That's another reason why I put these together. We're also gonna be leaving out any super heavy lift launchers like the Starship slash super heavy, previously known as BFR, 
and the SLS, since those rockets are in a completely different class on their own. Ooh, I love doing these. And this one is very interesting. So first up is SpaceX's Falcon Heavy, the only other reusable launcher in this class. Now next up is another three core heavy lifter, ULA's Mighty Delta IV Heavy. Then we have ULA's other launcher, the Vulcan. Now do note, this is not the Vulcan Heavy, which won't be online for a while longer. But even with just the standard Vulcan with six solids, it's right within the same specs as all these other rockets. Then we have Northrop Grumman Innovation Systems upcoming Omega rocket. But a quick note, they too will probably be making a heavy version of the Omega. But who knows when that's gonna come out. And there's really not that much information out about this rocket. So I had to fudge a few of these numbers, but I think they're pretty close, but take them all with a little grain of salt. And of course we have Blue Origin's new Glenn, which if you need a recap on this rocket, just rewind five minutes. So let's start with the most obvious thing, their heights. That new Glenn is massive. Standing at 95 meters tall, it's much taller than the Falcon Heavy at 70, Delta IV Heavy at 71, Vulcan at 66, and the Omega at 60 meters tall. New Glenn is also the widest, by quite a large amount too, at seven meters wide. Now compare that to 3.6 meters, well, times three of the Falcon Heavy, five meters, again, times three of the Delta IV Heavy, 5.4 meters of the Vulcan, and five meters of Omega. Next, we need to check out their fairing sizes. Now here's where New Glenn is in a class of its own. Its internal volume is massive, a whopping 458 cubic meters, compared to the Falcon Heavy, which shares the same relatively small fairing as the Falcon 9 at 145 cubic meters. Then there's the Delta IV, which can have up to 233 cubic meters. Now I can't find the exact numbers on Vulcan or Omega, but I believe they're probably going to be around that same 230 cubic meter-ish region. This massive fairing allows the new Glenn to do dual payloads with up to 10,000 kilograms in either the upper or the lower payload berths. This is something that ESA's Ariane 5 has done very well with. And now it looks like New Glenn's taking a note from its playbook. Now let's talk engines. There couldn't be a wider variety of engines on these rockets. The New Glenn, of course, has those seven BE-4 engines running Methalox on the first stage and two BE-3Us on the upper stage running Hydrolox. The Falcon Heavy has 27 Merlin-1Ds running Carelox on the first stage and a single vacuum-optimized Merlin-1D on the upper stage running Carelox also. The Delta IV Heavy has three RS-68As running Hydrolox and an upper stage with an RL-10B also running Hydrolox. Then we have the Vulcan, which actually has the same main engines as the New Glenn, the BE-4 but again, it only has two. However, it can have up to six powerful strap on solid rocket boosters. Its upper stage has two RL-10Cs running Hydrolox. Then there's the Omega rocket, which is just solids on solids and a dash of Hydrolox on top. It's a three stage rocket with a Castor 600 main booster, which is similar to the Space Shuttle solid rocket boosters, but only has two segments instead of four. Then it has a Castor 300 solid stage, and then its upper stage is similar to the Vulcan, as it too is RL-10C powered, but down to just one, which also runs Hydrolox. And it can have up to six Gem 63 XL strap-on solid rocket boosters as well. Okay, now let's get on to the fun stuff, thrust. The new Glenn delivers a more middle of the road 16,800 kilonewtons of thrust, much, much less than the Falcon Heavy, which has 22,815 kilonewtons but that's much more than the Delta IV Heavy at 9,420 kilonewtons. The Vulcan almost ironically comes in at virtually the exact same amount of thrust as New Glenn, despite having literally the exact same engines, well, but two instead of seven, but what it lacks in BE-4s it makes up for in SRBs, winding up with almost the exact same total thrust at 16,812. The Omega rocket has a combined 21,798 kilonewtons of thrust with seven SRBs firing. That sounds crazy. I can't wait to hear one of those fly. Okay, so thrust is great and all, but what can these things actually deliver to orbit? And now before we dive too far into this, I do want to point out I'm going to be quoting the three booster recovery for Falcon Heavy, one at sea, two at land, as I think that's how we're going to see it fly most of the time. And we're also going to be quoting the first stage recovery of New Glenn, as I don't think they ever intend to expend one. So keep that in mind when we're looking at these numbers. So first, how much can these rockets get to low Earth orbit? New Glenn can loft a massive 45 tons to LEO, Falcon Heavy 30. The Delta IV Heavy can take 28 tons, 
the Vulcan 27.5 tons, and the Omega I can't find an exact number on, but it's probably around 30 tons. And lastly, let's compare how much they can shoot off to a geostationary transfer orbit. New Glenn can loft 13.6 tons, Falcon Heavy 8 tons, Delta IV Heavy 14 tons, Vulcan 13 tons, and Omega 10.1 tons. A few reasons we see such massive differences in capabilities between these vehicles, again, is due to their recoverability, the efficiency of their engines, and in some cases, their physical size. And of course, the other big factor here is price. And at this point, we just don't have good enough information on all these launchers, or at least not accurate enough to wisely factor them in here. So that being said, I do think Falcon Heavy will be the one to beat, at least as far as price goes. I'll be very curious if New Glenn or any of the others will be able to beat it. So all in all, New Glenn is shaping up to be a super impressive rocket. By the numbers, it'll be the largest and most capable rocket flying when it goes online. Well, that is, of course, unless SLS makes it online, which I highly doubt it will do by 2021, or if SpaceX's Super Heavy starts flying by then, which I will see. But the race is on. I have a feeling the new Glenn is going to be impressively cost competitive as well. Seeing how they're planning to reuse the booster 25 times, how they can do massive dual payloads, and with streamlined operations like having their factory right next to the launch pad, this might shake up the industry. I for one am extremely excited to see this thing fly. And as you may or may not know by now, I'm not really a big fan of tribalism or just picking a favorite rocket or a favorite company. So of course, I'm gonna be cheering on Blue Origin and their new Glenn rocket all the way to orbit. 2021 can't come soon enough. So I'm sure the comment section is full of Jeff who and other whatever's about Blue Origin and new Glenn. I don't really care what you guys think. I'm super, super excited for this and I'm just a big fan of being positive and cheering on everyone in the aerospace industry. So I encourage our community here to do the same thing. So while you're down there in the comment section, let me know if you have any other questions about Blue Origin, about rockets, space flight, or even just give me feedback on if you think these videos are improving in quality or what things you think I'm missing or could improve on. As always, I owe a super huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for helping me do all of this stuff. There's a lot of work that goes into scripting and research, shooting and editing, and I couldn't do it without you guys. There's even patrons that are sitting in my exclusive Discord channel or sitting in our exclusive subreddit that help me script and research. If you wanna help contribute or even get access to exclusive live streams, please visit patreon.com slash everydayastronaut. Thank you. And while you're online, be sure and check out my brand new web store for things like these, Gridfin Nauta Coasters. Now, notice these are not coasters because they have holes in them, and that means the liquid can drip through to your surface. But I do promise they're gonna keep your drink elevated exactly this high off of whatever surface they're on, making them Gridfin Nauta Coaster drink elevators. And there's also lots of other fun stuff like shirts, hats, mugs, prints of rocket launches, and other original photographs, as well as stickers and patches. There's tons of new stuff on my brand new web store. You need to check it out, everydayastronaut.com shop. And finally, I did it. I got my music online for you guys. You've been asking me forever to get it up on iTunes and Spotify and yada, yada, yada. I finally have Maximum Aerodynamic Pressure, my first seven song EP, available hopefully everywhere you listen to music. So search for it. Listen to it while you're doing some science. Maybe you're studying, maybe you're building a rocket, maybe you're floating in space, maybe you're on a road trip, whatever it might be, check it out. Let me know what you think. And thank you so much for listening. That's everydayastronaut.com slash music or wherever you listen to music, hopefully you can find it. Thanks everybody, that does it for me. I'm Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut, bringing space down to earth for everyday people.